is Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. This is another uh, behind the scenes video for just how I work sometimes. So I have been showing you um, quite a few videos on, uh, you know, just my working on paper kind of stuff and like notebooks and just how I work off the laptop um, frequently as much as I can. Um, but sometimes I do work uh, just on on the computer. Eventually you have to go to the computer. And one thing that I do like is this outlining program, uh, this app called Workflowy. So I'm going to show you just a specific example when I've used Workflowy. And it's a pretty simple app and I guess overall. And it, it is an outliner so you can see just straight up it's it's outlining. Um, I do have a completed and I'll just show you like a couple finished ex examples. But the value here is you can um, like outline something, a topic of course, you can outline a topic and then you can dive down deeper. And one of the reasons that I'd like to work on paper and these legal pads and my notebooks is to limit distractions so I don't get you know, pulled off of my main goal, what I'm trying to do. And Workflowy helps that. Now, you can't, I have hidden, uh, I'm only recording part of the screen. I have like six other tabs open. So like those are distractions, like my email, my Gmail tabs open. So that's a distraction. And a lot of times when I work within Workflowy, I'll like close everything else out unless I need to do research. Um, but, you know, one of the other upsides to working on a notepad, I'm pointing at a notepad, which you can't see, working on a notepad is you can't go and do research, right? For me, research is like a pretty big source of when I can get distracted. So the thing is, like, if you are not looking for stuff, looking for information, then you just look it up later, like you move on, right? So that's okay. If I'm on the machine, I may try and look it up. But anyway, the point is, I may just have Workflowy open and it'll work in there. So I'll show you like a couple of these completed ones too. So I wrote a productivity ebook and we can just see what I've done here. So I divided it up and initially I just created these outlines here. Um, just, oh, <clears throat> sorry, I created the outline with these topics and then I went in and filled it in later. So I knew I wanted to cover these main topics here and then um, let's say the goals right so once I get into the goals I can just click on this node and then it opens everything up in this case I didn't I kept it at an outline level but in an example that I'll show you in a second you, I mean you can write all your in content in here and then just copy and paste it over to say WordPress or a Google Doc or wherever you're working. A text document, it doesn't matter. Um, so you can see you could like complete any of these nodes, add a note, share it, export, duplicate, delete it, etc. So you know you can actually use this as a project management tool. Some people do that. You could use it as a to-do list. Um, some people manage everything in this app. Um, I don't go to that level. Just if if the mood striking me right, I will use it. So um, going back to productivity, um, you know, I can, again, once I'm working on a specific section, I can just click there and it'll keep me from getting distracted. So let's go back to Niche Site Project and I'll show you sort of a, um, let's see, one other finished one, which is this debate. So you may remember this post that I published and it's a debate, it was a roundup post and a debate a lot of people participated. It was a pretty popular post. If you haven't read it, you should go check it out. Um, and I, this is one of those where I actually wrote a lot of the content in there. So again, I'm gonna just kinda pull it up, right? So this is the value of the outline. I can keep everything um, sort of abstracted so that I'm not in the details. I know I wanna, you know, mention the question and I want to go through an intro, talk about the disclaimer. And in this one, I actually wrote a lot of the information. And as we expand it out, um, especially around the intro, you can see, well, I spent a lot of time on the intro and I wrote out, you know, a few paragraphs, probably, you know, at least a couple hundred words there. 
um, or maybe a hundred words, but you can see I wrote it out and you can just copy this like that. And then I can go over to WordPress or wherever I'm working and then paste it in there. It's not formatted or anything, so you have to work with that. But the point is, you know, you can, I'm like, okay, this morning, I'm gonna work on the introduction. I'm just gonna do the introduction, and I'm gonna, you know, focus on that part. So it's a really nice way to hone in where you're trying to do your work. So I won't go into too many more um, of these, but I, like I said, I just want to point out, you can write everything through here. So first, next, last, and I really wrote the whole post, my whole section in Workflowy. And it, it was fine and, you know, it's kind of a, a clean way, you know, to, you know, put a sentence or two, divide up my paragraphs. And sometimes I just want to work within Workflowy. Not always, but sometimes I do. Now, I'll show you a great example of you know it being helpful so once I complete something I'll move it down to the completed area so I can keep it pretty clean in here um, and I will mention like I use Trello quite a bit too so like my mastermind group uses Trello um, for our meetings and I keep some stuff in there I actually have a Trello board for like my launch calendar for five figure niche site and just I think I have like somewhat of a content calendar in um, Trello also. I'm all over the place, I'll be honest with you. So I'm working in many different areas and there's not a specific system that I always use. Um, I am gravitating towards paper more and more, but I will tell you that I like apps and I like trying new stuff, um, but I'm not too rigid on it. I'm flexible and I like to try new stuff, even if it's like old techniques like paper and pen. So moving on, here is sort of a cool one. Um, so this is Project Go White Hat. And if you haven't seen that uh, case study, it's pretty long, right? So this is the overall goal is to sell a niche site for over $500,000. I started working on the project in uh, like early September or August, at the end of August of 2016. I'm shooting this video right now, it's like April of 2017. So I've been working on it for a while and I never even wrote, like I published part one here back in January. So I worked on it for months before I wrote anything. And you'll see, you know, there's a lot of parts that I've noted here. Um, and the story is not done yet, so there's going to be probably three, four more parts, um, you know, after we make the sale and everything like that. But as we're looking here, um, this is another case where I did write a lot, not all, but a lot of the content in these uh, in Workflowy. And you know, so what I would do, um, I actually sketched out how I wanted to do the story arc of this project like on paper. So kind of what I, I had in mind, and I may do a whole other video about this so I won't go too deep, um, because this should be about workflow and not the actual um, like story that I was trying to tell. But I really enjoy uh, like these series like Breaking Bad and um, I'm watching House of Cards right now. There were a few others which escaped me right now, but Breaking Bad is a great example. There's a lot of, of uh, I guess, series that are out right now that follow this. Oh, True Detective on HBO is one of the others. The thing that they do really well is they have a story arc that doesn't follow like the normal format of, say, a sitcom or you know, a network program. So. A lot of times, for example, my wife watches um, the show House. Uh, it's like the it's like a uh, medical drama, and uh, all of the episodes pretty much follow the same format. So you know when it's fifteen or twenty minutes in, they haven't figured out the solution. You know whatever they think the you know ailment is for that patient, um, it's wrong because there's too much time left in the episode. With these series like Breaking Bad. Um, House of Cards and uh, so on, they don't have to fit in that format. They can, um, you know, introduce two or three problems in an episode, 
solve one and then you have you know two new problems that are introduced at the end of that one episode and then you have like five problems that need to be solved sometime in the future and I had that in mind so when I wrote like part one and part two I wanted to make sure there were questions that you had open loops they call them where um, you know I didn't provide all the information but I told you about some problems that I was having and I keep doing that over and over and if you go and read these blog posts you'll see that I'm not resolving everything you know one <laughs> like it's actually not resolved so I can't actually pro provide all the information but you know I know how the story is progressing so I am telling you just what I want you to know so that I can reveal some things later I hope it's more interesting um, it, it was definitely an experiment I know I can improve on it so like I said I talked a lot about it here but let's go into you know like part one and the background information here and you can see um, you know I'm putting a lot of detail in here and you can tell that you know I'm trying to you know do I do a graphic here like what do I do I actually created a timeline and a graphic here which I've used quite a lot at this point but you know like I said you could you could tell that I'm just going through all the details here um, and at this, you know, this particular point, I, you know, basically copy and paste it over to WordPress and then I'll add more details as needed. You can see some of these are not like this is not full sentence form. It's more like outline form. But, you know, most of the time I can like add to that sentence, like make it fit in within the context of the post. Um, you know, here is a good example where I'm like, OK. There's only so much time I can do, uh, you know, this particular piece of work so I could dive in to the background and failures just to give people an idea of what's going on. So it rolls up really well. And as I'm writing it, like, you know, I publish part, parts one through four over about two weeks. So normally, you know, I would publish something once a week, but because of the way I wanted to release this material, I published it a little bit more quickly and you know on this one I you know part one like hey um, you know if you want to keep reading I'm gonna publish the next one tomorrow I'm I can't remember I may have actually published these two at the same time and you know people would read the first part and then they would go immediately to the second part and read it um, so that is like a great way to <laughs> Well, it was an experiment. It was a great way to see if people actually like were hooked on the story and they wanted to know more. And I, you know, I think it worked reasonably well. And let's see, you know, this is a shorter one because this is actually a video. I reveal the partnership. My partner is Rob, so hopefully I didn't like spoil the story for you. But um, you know, I sort of created the the loose outline of what Rob and I were going to talk about here. And that is how we did it. So like I said, this is sort of like an ongoing thing. Anything crossed out, you can see actually um, I completed this. You know, anything that's published, I went ahead and marked it as complete. And I haven't, I haven't uh, gone into detail about the adaptability. Um, that post will probably come out like, in a week or two so I haven't wrote that yet and I know that you know there's gonna be at least a part um, 9 and 10 um, and there may actually be you know 9 through 12 it may be good to have like a you know 12 part series here and um, you know pretty solid case study which is not complete yet so this is workflowy and I encourage you to check it out. You know, there's a lot, here's like the keyboard shortcuts. So if you're actually like doing work in it often, you can get, you know, pretty ninja on it. You don't really have to, you know, use your mouse. You can work really quickly. And like I said, check it out. It's free. It's actually free. Um, there's some, they have a freemium model, right? So you get like, all the functionality, but I think they limit the number of like outlines you can do. It's pretty reasonable, and you can you know pay. I think it's just a few dollars a month if you actually wanted to purchase it, or you can invite other people. That's what I did. I invited several of my friends to check it out, and they joined, and I got a little extra capacity per month, which is like way more than I need. 
So like I said, I use it sometimes, but not all the time when I do want to sit down and you know type something out um, or maybe I've sketched out the idea on my notepad already, then I can you know take the loose outline, the notes and the brainstorming, move it over to Workflow and take it from there. So thanks for watching. If you haven't signed up or sorry, subscribe to uh, this YouTube channel, please subscribe for it. I appreciate the support. And if you haven't checked out my site, Niche Site Project, you should check it out. It's pretty cool. This story is, um, you know, depending on when you watch this, it may be done at this point, but it's still ongoing right now. Okay, thanks.